Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the bench. Just want to give everybody a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for the subscribership and viewership. I just went over 4,000 subscribers. And, you know, I'm not a high volume channel or anything, high viewership, you know, after four years. But, you know, to me, that's great. I don't put up videos a lot. And I don't use high production you know, video quality or anything like that. So, you know, it works for me. But I really appreciate the views and the subscribership. Okay, so what? back on the bench here I have my main listening amp. In the other video where I was talking about power consumption, I found that I was getting 13 watts per channel into 4 ohm loads with this power supply and I noted that the capacitors were pretty small I have 2200 microfarad per capacitor or 4400 per rail and that's I mean that's right on the minimum I mean this thing worked fine for years I was just wondering what would happen if I put larger caps in so I dug these out of my parts drawer uh, Jamie Con, uh, 4700s, and the smaller ones are 3300s. 25 volts, these were 35 volts. It's okay to mix up the voltage. They're going to be in parallel, of course. The worst case, with a high supply line voltage, the highest the rails would be is 20, so we're well ahead of that. The only thing is, I don't know if I have enough room to get these in here. But they might fit. I was using this on another project, so I'll have to desolder those wires. Uh, I checked out the capacitance. They're, they're good. And I'm not going to measure ESR. I'm sure they're good. But if I can get them to fit in there, that'll give me... 8,000 microfarads per rail. A little less than double what these were, so it should help a little bit. It might kick me up to what I would suspect. I would suspect like at least 14 watts per channel out of this thing. I don't know if that's going to get me there or not, but it should get rid of some of that excessive ripple that we measured in the last video. Okay, so see if I can uh, desolder this and put the new caps in. I really don't want to rebuild this. I was thinking about just rebuilding it and getting new capacitors, but a new uh, larger bridge and everything. But yeah, I'll just put the caps in and see how that works out. That should be plenty. Change of plans. Now these capacitors... They're a little fatter, and I'd have to move these wires around. This is a little bit wider. And before I even started, I noticed one of the original capacitors was a little bit wiggly. And the trace had lifted. Of course, I totally ripped it off there now, but... It was still connected, but it was just lifted. These are not the best things to use. I like to rely on the wires, you know, using the wires, running it along with the trace to help firm it up, get better conductivity and everything. So what I'm going to do, I have this board, I'm going to mount a full way bridge, I have an 8 amp bridge, it will mount underneath then you can screw it right down into the chassis of the power supply and it acts as a heat sink as well as a mounting point. I have these two 10,000 microfarad Panasonics 105C and they'll mount on the board here and I'll see if I can recover these resistors or not. 
So I'll have even more capacitance then and using these. Here's the semi-finished supply. So a screw will go right through and bolt this down to the aluminum. Give it some heat sinking. And I soldered the capacitors. This is the negative rail. Discharge resistors. And all I have to do is solder the positive leads or the uh, transformer leads here and the negative lead, positive lead and the center tap lead would go here. And uh, just bolt this thing down. Only using one bolt. This thing doesn't really go anywhere, it just sits around so I'm not too worried about it. And it feels pretty solid anyway, so. I'll finish that up and put it back together. Okay, it's all soldered together. There's the bridge down there doing its thing. I'll just uh, make sure everything's connected right. Power it up. Okay, brought it up on the bulb limiter. 15 watt bulb there and it's real dim so it's working just fine. I measured the voltage. I'm getting proper voltages on the output. So this thing is ready for testing. Okay, I have the 4 ohm non-inductive loads connected to both channels. Like always, both channels driven in these tests if it's a stereo amp. And we'll adjust. You see the clipping? A lot less ripple. Look at that. It doesn't ripple nearly as much. So now we can ride closer to the, the rail. So tune out the those bumps, harmonic bumps. So you're getting like seven point. I can stand to go lower a bit. Now we'll say seven point seven three. Okay, I'll use this one dollar scientific calculator. 7.73. Yes, you can buy a calculator. Where's the square button? Right here. I'm trying to look through the camera screen. You can't really see. And divide that by 4 ohms. Wow. Before we were like 12.9. Now we're 14.9. We gained about 2 watts just by using better or larger filtering capacitors. Same transformer, but uh, larger filter caps. So it did improve our output considerably. Now I'm just curious what this would put out just one channel driven. That would be an argument for, you know, if I build another amp using a separate power supply for each channel so they're essentially mono blocks inside the same case let me set that up and see what that does okay I removed the one channel that's not being um, scoped here and just the clipping out Let's get right up on the clipping there. Harmonics are gone. It might be a little low. Eight point nine nine eight. We'll just say nine. Okay, so let me stop that. Okay, we said nine squared that's just 81 divided by 4 ohms wow really wow 20.25 watts so you got about 20 watts you can see how using two channels pulls the rail voltages down quite a bit so we're getting 15 watts with both amplifiers driven and 20 watts just one so 
yeah I didn't think it'd go that high but I figured about 17 or 18 watts that's pretty good so I might if I build another one I might use two of these because I have a whole bunch of these transformers I bought real cheap so well there you go that's the power supply upgrade thanks for watching